Hey chemistry, I want to show you about how light can be split by a prism so that you can see the individual wavelengths that make up the light source that you're seeing and how that can result in a line spectrum when you have one specific element. So the first thing I have to do is turn off the lights so that you can see this effect. So hang with me, it's gonna get pretty dark here in just a second. Um, I'm gonna flip off the lights and I'll be right back. All right, so you may not be able to see me, but I am here. Um, the first light source we're gonna look at is our window. Um, you can see that we have sunlight pouring in. And this is considered to be a white light source. And so a white light source like the sun or a white light bulb is going to produce what we call a continuous spectrum. So a continuous spectrum contains every single wavelength. And if we split the light, uh, we can see all those different wavelengths. So, I'm gonna split the light with something called prism glasses that you can see here in my hand. And when I hold them up to the camera, what it does is the light bends through these glasses and each wavelength bends at a different angle. And so all the light that comes in together gets split into their different angles and you can see them all individually. Let's see what this looks like with a white light source. All right, so you can see here that a white light source is gonna get bent into a continuous spectrum. If you look on the top line of that window, you see a rainbow. And notice that rainbow is continuous. It contains every single light wavelength. Um, and we don't see any black spots where there's the absence of light or white spots where there's multiple wavelengths together. We just see the continuous spectrum. And that's because the sun produces every single wavelength within the visible spectrum. Now, if we were to switch this to a, a light source that just gives off light from one element, then what we're gonna get is the, the only the wavelengths that are produced by that one element. And we get a line spectrum or an atomic emission spectrum. So let's go check this out. I'm gonna take you with me back to a darker corner of our classroom. Okay, so welcome to a darker corner of our classroom. Um, here I have a light bulb a light source, you can see it. This is hydrogen. So this is what's called a Geissler tube. And what it is is a tube that's filled with hydrogen gas and electricity is being run through it. Now remember, when electricity is run through a, a gas or an element, a metal, a salt is put into a fire, the electrons in that atom are going to absorb energy move to an excited state, release that same energy in a different form, probably a form of electromagnetic radiation like visible light, and then the electron's going to fall back down towards the nucleus and return to its ground state. So, same idea, if I put these prism glasses in front of this light source, you're gonna be able to see the wavelengths that are given off by the electron. Okay, and so you can see it a little bit there. That is the hydrogen line spectrum. Um, and you can see the wavelengths that are given off by hydrogen. Um, I am, these wavelengths are specific to the distances that the electrons are traveling in the atom of hydrogen. If I switch atoms, the new atom will have new distances and will give off new wavelengths. So let's switch this out. I'm going to remove the hydrogen. 
hydrogen tube. And I'm going to insert a tube of argon gas. Okay, so this tube is filled with argon gas. When we run electricity through it, we can see now that already without the glasses, we can tell that argon is a different color <clears throat> than helium. So all the wavelengths put together for argon come together and we see this color. So when we look through the prism glasses, It splits it into the characteristic colors that argon gives off. And we can turn it to separate those colors. And it produces a line spectrum. So notice how it's separate lines that you see. Separate lines of color. It is not continuous like the window light was, it produces a spectrum that has some gaps in between the colors. So each of those lines represents a different color that argon gives off. And that's what we call a line spectrum. Okay, now this can be done with other things as well. We could actually use this to look at almost any light source and we could figure out the gases or the components that make up that light source based on the light that it produces. Let's take a look and see if we can do this with the ceiling lights. All right, so here's a ceiling light. Let's see if I put this in front of the ceiling light and again see those different colors that are produced we can use those different colors in the line spectrum to figure out what kind of gas our ceiling tube lights are filled with notice we're not seeing a continuous spectrum from these lights we're only seeing a couple different wavelengths come out and that's why on a camera sometimes your pictures come out looking a little blue or a little yellow and you have to use what's called white balance of the camera to trick the camera into seeing a continuous spectrum instead of seeing the partial spectrum that most light bulbs give off. Okay, so there you go. <clears throat> we'll look at this again in terms of a couple salts, and we'll see if we can use the line spectrum of the salts to identify the elements that make it up. Okay, let me know if you have questions. See you in class.